After the police round up groups of street kids in their attempt to investigate a murder, a young boy, Pichud, is sent to a juvenile reformatory institution where, amongst the oppressive orders of the guards and the sexual violence amongst the young inmates, he befriends a group of misfit youth, building a strong bond. However, when Smoke is beaten to a pulp by the police, left to die within the institute's infirmary, the administrative corruption which blames the youth for the murder motivates Pichotte and the gang to escape, making their own way through the streets of Sao Paulo, picking pockets and becoming exploited via drug trafficking, leading their group down the darkest paths that will truly challenge how strong their bond really is. This is Hector Bebenco's Pichot, a classic of Brazilian cinema which borrows heavily from the realistic observation of Italian neorealism and documentary filmmaking, establishing the film with a powerfully resonant yet infamous reputation for not shying away from believable cruelty. The film focuses on Brazilian issues such as youth criminality, child exploitation and the callous nature of oppressive authority. Due to this, Pichot is reminiscent of the socially conscious Alan Clark film Scum. However, However, while not flinching away from the brutality depicted, Babenko's film retains a deep and progressive empathy for its flawed characters, which makes the dissolving of Pichotta's chosen family of street kids all the more heartbreaking. The authenticity of Italian neorealism and the realism of documentary filmmaking is ever present within Pichotta, creating the immersive impression that we as viewers are right beside these characters. Shots such as Pichotta sniffing glue in a filthy restroom linger for uncomfortably long periods of time allowing it to dawn on the viewer that, while this might be a performance, someone else's reality will look exactly like this. Sequences such as when Pichot and Dito target people on the streets of Sao Paulo to pickpocket are also filmed in a manner that could quite easily be newsreel footage of real life criminality, finding inspiration within documentary and neorealist filmmaking. In this manner demonstrates Pichot's ability to capture the sense of true believability. A significant detail to share is that the film's lead actor, Fernando Ramos da Silva, was shot by three police officers claiming that he was armed, a detail criticised by Fernando's sister who said he was unarmed. Fernando's death at 19 years old at the hands of a brutal authority unfortunately reflects and reinforces the truth of the cruelty at the hands of power corrupt guards and police within this film. Pichot is a film passionate about Brazilian social issues of youth criminality, poverty and corrupt authority. The director Hector Bibenco introduces the film himself in a brief documentary like segment where he introduces the viewers to a favela. The circumstances of the children living there we are told are below the standards of the United Nations International Rights for Children organization. Three million children at the time were filming without a home, parents or a family of origin. The director contextualizing his film in this manner, even highlighting that many of the young cast members are children from backgrounds such as this, further reinforces the reality of the scenes his film is about to depict. It's easier to believe in a film's sense of truth when the viewers can see the reality for themselves. Due to this concern regarding child poverty and a lack of opportunities which leads children ripe for exploitation by drug traffickers who wish to avoid the consequences of their own actions, Pichota is a film with a deep sense of empathy towards its youthful cast. The film is keen to depict portrayals of solidarity and comfort within Pichota's own dysfunctional chosen family. Dito tells Lilica that he wishes to take them all away to a warm beach. After Chico and Pichot spend time splashing in the waves, Lilica provides them with a sandwich and they talk about their plans for the future when they earn the money from peddling drugs. As Lilica sings somberly, Pichot holds her. There is a clear sense of closeness with these characters and the director's portrayal of these characters is delivered with a sense of compassion for them. They are given no opportunities and must face a world that either rejects them or abuses them. This is especially present with the character Lilica, a trans teenager without the resources to physically transition beyond her clothing, and is often misgendered, facing frequent transphobia. She is a considerate and sharp-witted character, often with a flirtatious sense of humour, managing to sniff the bullshit from miles away, such as when the gang is cheated out of their money and drugs in a failed deal with a strip club's go-go dancer. Lilica admits that, when she turns 18, she will need to stop living a life of crime because if she caught. She knows the physical and mental abuse she will face within a prison. Lilica is someone rejected due to her gender identity, often facing transphobia outside of her close-knit group, but she also knows that the abuse at the hands of authority will be so much worse if she doesn't leave while she still can. 
While other characters may disrespect Lilica for her identity, the film itself never does, presenting her as flawed yet funny, considerate, and often selfless. Even her jealousy towards Dito, her intimate partner, when he becomes uncomfortably close with Suli, a sex worker, demonstrates that Lilica has a sense of responsibility that others within the group lack, using her jealousy as a motivation to finally leave the fracturing chosen family. A significant tragedy within Pichotta is the crumbling of the chosen family. This group of young people having little to no family they rely on end up relying on each other for their solidarity, and for this group in particular, it works for a brief while. However, Chico dies in a deal gone wrong, Lilica leaves upset by Dito changing into someone more abusive, and Dito is accidentally shot by Pichotta in a stick-up that goes south, leaving Pichotta with Suli within a scene that is simultaneously upsetting and distressing. As Pichot throws up while watching television in Suli's bed, she begins to hold him like he is a newborn, telling him mother is here. Pichot reveals one of her breasts and is breastfed, while an uncomfortable image that is allowed to linger on the screen. It's also a clear depiction of Pichot reverting to a younger mental state, a childishness he never truly got to experience. Similarly, Suli is a character who has had numerous abortions to continue working as a sex worker, and is likely not mentally prepared for parenthood. But within this brief moment, she experiences a maternal nature she repressed and unfortunately continues to repress as she barks at Pichot to stop, pushing him away, exclaiming her hatred for children. She may truly feel this way, some people certainly do, but this could also be a protective measure to make certain that she isn't hurt by those closest to her, a protective barrier that, when Pichot leaves, he may also utilise due to his own experience within a fracturing chosen family, leaving himself truly alone in the world, his chosen family gone, no ties to his origins, Pichota is left to wander alone. An optimistic perspective may suggest that Pichota has been given a second chance to leave these situations with his life, but for a film so consistently filled with hard truths and cruelty, it's difficult to find anything bright in his future. In conclusion, Hector Babenko's Pichota is an essential piece of Brazilian cinema that provides a socially conscious and empathetic examination of youth bound together, only for the world they live within to eventually tear them apart. It is a difficult viewing experience, but a completely necessary one, raising awareness of the sociological reasons why people turn to criminality. A lack of family support and a lack of future opportunities play significant factors here, and the difficulty of escaping it, a tragic tale that is all too real. Be sure to needs to be seen. A special thank you to my incredible tier Patreon supporter Gil and to my super tier Patreon supporters Constantin Bombelli and Atleila Lu One.